Hello, welcome to the Nebraska Arts Council Fred Simon Gallery. My name is Megan Dion. I am the manager of the gallery and um, am happy to present to you today a new exhibition by Santiago Call. Uh, shortly, we will hear directly from him and I hope that you're able to come see the exhibition. My name is Santiago Cal. I am originally from Belize, Central America, and I came to the United States at the age of 13, and that was really my introduction to art. Um, and um, I passionately pursued it, just uh, exploring all avenues of making, but sculpture was really the, the one method of making that I, that I found particularly um, inspiring and challenging, and I just loved both the working with my hands, doing physical labor, but also um, discovering new materials. The majority of the work in the show has um, wooden components, and I would call myself a uh, wood carver primarily. And I have been working with this material for quite some time, um, since undergraduate school really, um, sculpting it anyway. I find it really compelling to, to work with um, individual pieces of wood. You know, they respond differently. I can't, I can't approach it with assumptions. Um, I have to learn as I'm working with the particular material. And um, as a figurative carver, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to dig some life out of these, these pieces of wood. Right, and um, and so I I normally have a plan, but also it's a conversation with with all chunks of wood. So there are a couple pieces here that have <clears throat> that are sort of glued together, laminated together, and I construct it that way. And this and small figure is the w one example of that. But then there are other pieces um, like um, you know speak, which is. Um, it has a branch and I really respond to the knots and the erosion and just the way life has impacted that particular um, tree and I, I try to um, to honor that and and uh, or, you know bring some focus to those moments of beauty that I find within the, the pieces of wood. So some of the works that I create are full figures and then some of the works that I create um, are fragmented figures and in this show there are a lot of um, mostly busts, just heads and some shoulders um, and um, at times that's okay, I, you know, there's a long history of presenting just a portraiture that way, um, but in, in this case I really wanted to, to address the body itself. Um, and have th that component symbolize um, or include symbols for meaning of the f figures themselves. In this particular piece, uh, Impossible Toil, um, I approached these two figures. One, I was thinking about their relationship to each other. Um, they, if they were facing each other, it would be one kind of communication. They're both looking in, in a, a similar direction. Their, their levels are different. You know, that all speaks to how they're interacting. But more importantly, I was um, really wanted to deal with the structure below them. And I was thinking about farm machinery. I was thinking about um, how uh, the, the earth has been worked and uh, in this particular part of the country. Um, but I didn't want to replicate any particular farm machinery. I didn't want it to be illustrative that way. So I just allowed my imagination to think of it as, as a, line, a mental line drawing. And um, because uh, I didn't want it to be a, f a particular task that they were doing. I wanted it to be a metaphoric task that they were doing.
Well, uh, the, sh the show also includes uh, three graphite drawings and some um, drawings that accompany four reliefs that are on the wall over there. Um, the, the subject matter of the figures involved are all based on, on my son. Uh, my relationship with my son, um, uh, watching him dream, watching him explore, discover this, this part of the country as well. It's really uh, compelled me to also dream and approach art making in, in a similar fashion. The, the drawings themselves are not meant to, to show literal experiences. They're really meant to be just uh, works of fiction, you know, where, where one falls into um, suspended reality and, and starts to imagine another place or, or even mentally be in another space. Um, and that's, that's sort of the, the motivation behind the drawings. Um, with my sculptures, I draw a lot. Um, I draw in sketchbooks as preparatory drawings. I draw directly on the material that then gets erased through the carving process. And that's just a repeated action. Um, uh, it's rare that I actually sit down and do finished drawings though. Um, I, I don't consider myself uh, a, a very good drawer. But these pieces were particularly important for me to include in this exhibition just because I feel like they really cement the, my reasonings behind um, in, you know, exploring some of the reliefs and also the, the main small figure which is you know, across the abyss. So um, this little figure is called Across the Abyss and uh, I was really interested in not necessarily creating a portraiture of anyone in particular, it refers to my son, but um, I wanted a very simple gesture that, um, but at the same time have, have the figure be very expressive, just sort of looking out and, and wandering. And so um, to accentuate the small scale, I also made uh, this, this um, stool, which doesn't make, it doesn't um, have much convention to it, but you get the idea that it's a stool. Um, it also looks like a, like an art, little make believe piece of architecture in the back that's holding it up. So all these elements are used to, to help construct sort of like a, a playful, imaginative reality that uh, this little figure is, is existing in. Um, so um, the color, the color, I, I tend to all, I make a lot of figures in sh brightly colored shorts. And I think I do it for two reasons. One is to, um, to just, you know, uh, express a, a sense of comfort, like just being comfort with your environment. And, um, and then also the, bright light, the color um, palette in particular, um, I'm drawn to particular colors and there's some orange on the, on the figure behind me. Um, these colors all stem from um, my childhood and growing up in, in Central America and Belize is on the Caribbean coastline so we have that co Caribbean color palette on our homes, on the roofs, on, on the flowers on the trees. These are, these are things that have embedded, that, you know, a color that have embedded themselves into my subconscious. And, and when I use them, I'm sort of like tapping back into those moments and places and time. And, and so, although they're very simple, they're not complicated colors or painted with a lot of modeling, um, that's, that's where the colors come from. Um, thank you all for watching this brief summary of the exhibition. I hope you get to make it down and, and see it in person. Um, I think you'll enjoy walking around the, the sculptures and looking at the drawings. Um, I'd also like to thank the Nebraska Arts Council again for this beautiful space. Um, 
and uh, if you're interested in in hearing more about the work or just communicating with me in any way I teach at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln and that's where I reside and would be happy to to chat with you about your work.